So there's the strut. I have to get that strut up into that platform to get it to align into that cutlass bearing right there to where it'll line up in the motor and the shaft will spin freely and be as straight as possible. So let's get started. This is gonna be a test run. The, I put the strut back on and there's no adhesive on it. So I just, it's just up to where it would be. It shouldn't be different. It should just be exactly the same way. And then the bearing this morning, I sanded it all. So it's, that's it, it's done. And I put the first coat of barrier coat on and I'm using West Systems Epoxy. And it takes like an hour. You have to wait an hour or so for it to get tacky, put another coat. You just keep doing that until you get six coats. And it should be seven, because the last coat you sand off, that makes it six, but you know, it's not that big a deal. Five, six, seven coats. And um, tomorrow I can paint and it's done. It's done as long as this shaft thing all goes right. <laughs> Everything's good. So let's put the, I'm gonna put some soap on the shaft where it'll slide up through these through these cut uh, through these rubber pieces because they're kind of tight and it, they're hard to get up in there. So let's do that. Skag is in the way. Shit. All right. All right. Take two. I put more soap. So I shut soap up into the into the hole. So let's see. Aha! She did it. She's in. So look how much off that is, Dakota. All right, so it doesn't line up. Watch, that's, it'll line up left to right, but up to down, look how much it's off. I don't know how it could be off that much because we haven't changed anything. I think that's how much it was off in the first place so watch when I push up on it put a lot of pressure on it you see I put pressure on it I can get it to about halfway but that means I'm gonna have to drop these back washers down to pivot that thing down that's why it was a test run. Gosh darn it, I was hoping it was just gonna line right back up nice and simple. So, all right, Nakoda. Yeah. Go back up top. And come here. Go back up top, put the wrench on these two back ones and we're gonna loosen them up to where we can pull these out and then I'm gonna put washers in it and let that drop down. Got it? Yeah. Go. Mm. I think I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Go, Sinbad, go. Go, okay. Sinbad, go. Okay. What are you waiting on? Thank you. 
So I dropped the strut down. I put one washer. That's a pretty good wide washer. Let's see how much one washer changes the pitch to go up into that in there. So, all right, you ready? Go. The washer bit didn't work. So what I did, because I spent the whole day trying to adjust this to get it where it should set, and then I had to take epoxy and re-bed this to the way it's supposed to set. So what I did is I took like a brass nipple like that, and I cut it in half. Well, I cut it to a little more than a half inch, two of them. And then I used that and I slid it up in there until I got it aligned. I, and I grind a little bit off, put it back in there until I got this to where it would set the way it's supposed to set, to where it's spin perfect. And uh, once I did that, I took hot glue, a hot glue gun and I glued this to the hole where it goes up, and then I took epoxy, thickened epoxy, and spread it all in there, and then I bolted, I put Vaseline on the bottom of the strut, and then I put the bolts on the outside corners, tightened it all up, and let it set and dry overnight. And uh, now, if you look up in here, it's a half inch about right here. And then as it goes down, it just goes down to right against the old epoxy platform. So that's how you re you have, you can't just put washers here, here and here and expect this to be strong. You have to re-bed it with epoxy. But so that's how, that's how you do it. Then now you have to, and then you have to, Take the bolt. So the bolts that I put in all four corners, you had to worry about them getting stuck in there. So you have to cover them with Vaseline and shove them up in there. And then you have to clean these holes out with Dawn liquid soap and get all that grease out of these holes and then take acetone and clean all this up. And uh, then you're ready to bed the bolts. And then you just use 4200, just 3M 4200 and you put a shitload of grease on here. I'll show you. Well, a, a shitload of 4,200. Don't worry about getting it on the threads because you, you have to push this stuff up in there. It's not just by, it's, you just, it's not just spinning it all around. You have to push it up in there with your finger. So kind of make a V on the bolt, get it thick like that. So start with spinning it, in, spinning it in. And then as you get there, then you have to start with stick it, pushing it with your finger. That, and don't make worry about making a mess. You're not gonna, this stuff will wipe right down off with acetone. And then push it up a little bit and then keep pushing it in there and then if you run out as you're pushing it in go get some more on Facebook I mean on YouTube there really isn't any video showing somebody how to put a strut on except there's one but it's not a strut like this and I don't remember how I figured out how to re-bed it with the epoxy. I don't remember. But I just know that's how you do it. You can't depend on those washers and bolts working as a structure. And this it's this part right here. Because think about it. This strut is probably going to be on here for the next 10, 15 years maybe even longer before anybody ever takes it off again. So it's not something you gotta worry about on, oh, I'm gonna take it off in two years or four years. So there, that one's bedded. And I'll go up on top, put the bolt on. And then you see this crack that goes around. 
I should have. That one's all right. It should have been a little thinner. I should have fiberglassed and made it thinner. And over here, look at the width of this gap. You see the width of this gap? That's like an inch. I should have built that out with fiberglass to where there's a quarter, only a quarter inch around the whole thing. And then I could have put 4,200 in that crack. And then every couple of years, I could dig it out, put new in. But now that this crack's so big, I think I'm just gonna fill it full of epoxy and fare with a fairing compound and kind of fare that out and then paint it and move on. Because, you know, like I said, it's, not, it's, it's something that you only mess around with every 10, 20 years, unless there's something really drastic happens. So that's the strut, and that's the end of all the strut stuff, and let's move on. I know I said it's the end of the strut stuff, but I couldn't say, I couldn't stop. So now I took West Systems Epoxy and squeezed it up into these cracks, so that's full of epoxy, and that's the first coat of black ablative, no, black uh, hard bottom paint. And then it's gonna get two coats. So there's six coats of West Systems Epoxy for a barrier coat, then this black paint, and then two coats of red ablative. And the only reason I put this hard stuff is, is when the ablative wears away, I know that it's worn, needs to be repainted. But when it comes to this strut, remember, there's Vaseline under this under this strut. So if this ever has to get taken off, you just cut away a little bit right here. And then this should pop off because the Vaseline won't stick to the epoxy. Because remember, I bedded, I put at least that thick of epoxy up in there, push it up, and this is half inch. This is touching the plate. And this is dropped down a half inch to make this line up between this cutlass bearing this cut bearing to where see how easy it spins and uh, that's what you have to do next time on the bohemian I tackle the maxi prop and that thing's like a Chinese puzzle so there's no room for mistake if I get it wrong it's 600 bucks to pull back out and then be put back in so that's the end of the video so thanks for watching